how to publish a case report. When I started my journey in the US, I had zero publications and I was with my mentor and he asked me, do you wanna write this case as a case report? And I was so excited and I said, of course, yes, I can do it. But I had no idea how to write a case report. Now that I've written multiple case reports, did the three years of dedicated research time, I've published 157 publications. At the time of recording this video, I wanna share with you how to publish a case report. Make sure to stick until the end of this video because this is gonna be an exciting journey and I will also be sharing with you a free checklist that can help you publish your case report. The first step in publishing a case report is doing your research. You'll be excited as I was when somebody tells you do you wanna write this as a case report and you will be jumping into the work and start collecting the information and writing the manuscript without doing due diligence. Because you will notice after you put all that work that not all case reports are published and you don't want to be wasting all the time to know later that this was not worth the work. So doing your literature search is the first step in publishing your case report. And what do I mean by that? I mean going and searching the literature to identify if somebody else has published something similar to this case. If there are multiple systematic reviews with hundreds of patients similar to your case presentation, then it might not worth the time to do this case. If there is an article or even multiple articles with 50, 60 patients of your case then in that case probably your case report will not be published but on the other hand if you only see one similar case presentation in the literature or zero case presentation similar to your case in that case it might be worthwhile pursuing that endeavor and how to do the literature search you can start from google by searching certain keywords of your case and see what articles pop up and then go to pubmed and do the same and i have a detailed video that shows you how to do a literature search and i'll leave the link for that video in the description below and if you want a more advanced course to teach you how to do the literature search, how to design a research project more than just a case report, a research project with multiple patients, go ahead and check out the research course I have for you and I'll leave the link for that in the description below and in the cards above. Now moving on to the next point that will help you publish your case report which is identifying the funding. To give you a little bit background if you're not familiar with the types of journals, there are two main types of journals, subscription based and open access journals. Subscription based journals get the money from from the reader so the reader has to pay the journal in order to read the article but the author does not pay to publish the paper on the other hand open access journals the reader does not have to pay anything anyone can access the article anywhere in the world for free however the author pays the journal when they publish the article so the bad news here is that a lot of the subscription based journals the journals that the author does not have to pay to publish do not publish case reports and case reports are generally published in open access journals which means you have to pay to publish your case report. That's not always the case. There are exceptions and sometimes subscription-based journals in which you as an author don't have to pay publish case reports, but generally case reports are published in open access journals, in journals in which you have to pay to publish the case report. So that's why identifying the funding is critical because if you don't think your case can go into subscription-based, you have to ask your mentor, do you have enough money or funding to pay for that article? Because imagine after all the work that you do, you submit the article to the journal and they ask you for money and your mentor tells you I don't have any funding. So that's why identifying funding resource is critical when publishing case reports. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're from a resource limited country, there are sometimes exceptions in these journals where they give you 50% off or 75% off or fully off uh, depending on where you're from. The third step in publishing the case report is do you have enough information about the case? Many times we have very cool cases and rare you know presentations but we don't have enough information about the case. We don't have the labs or we don't have the images or we don't have follow-up which is critical in case reports. Imagine doing surgery or giving a medication uh, for heart failure and the patient only came a few days after the surgery or after giving the medication and we lost contact to the patient. How can we say that the surgery actually worked? Maybe the patient died a week later and we have no idea. The same with the heart failure medication. Maybe the patient had much more uh, terrible symptoms after we gave the medication but we have no idea. So that's why having enough information about the case is critical before you go ahead and pursue that case. And you can see how I'm stressing a lot on the preparation before you go ahead and pursue the case report by doing your research, identifying the funding, identifying how much information you have about the case because these are critical in making sure that you actually succeed and publish your case report. I've seen many failure stories and that's why I want to warn you so you don't end up spending hours and hours working and then discovering later that it was not 
not worth it. Before we move on, if you're interested in learning more about research, how to design full research studies, how to collect data, how to write manuscripts, how to do statistical analysis, systematic reviews, I have multiple online courses that can help you achieve that. All these courses are 100% refundable if you're not satisfied and you can check the amazing reviews that our students had from these courses and you can find the links for these courses in the description below. And now let's move on to the next step after we identified that this case is worth pursuing by making sure it's a unique case, by making sure we have enough information about the case and we have enough funding, we go ahead and collect information about the case. Try to collect as much information as you can. Start with the presentation of the disease and by that I mean the signs and symptoms that the patient presented with. Sometimes you find this information in a paper chart. You, If you have electronic medical record that would be even better but some Sometimes you might have to go and ask the patient, as the family, try to get as much information as possible from reliable resources. Then we go to the workup. What did you do? Did you do labs? Did you do imaging? Pathology? Do you have a picture of a lesion? What was the differential diagnosis of this case and how it was managed? Was it managed with medications? Was it managed surgically? If it was managed surgically, you can talk about the surgical technique and very importantly, the follow-up and how did you measure the outcome? Collecting all this information from reliable resources will set you for success when writing the paper. And by the way, if you're interested in coming to the US to do research here, it is possible. And I've collected my experience and multiple colleagues' experience who went through the same process on how to find the best research positions that will help you achieve your dream. And you can find all the information you need about this course in the cards above and in the description below. And now after you collected all the information you need about the case, many go to write the manuscript. But I have a different order of things. When I was doing my first case report, I was so excited to go ahead and write the paper after I collected all the information. But my mentor told me, stop, do not write the paper. And I was like, why? He said, you need to go ahead and write me an outline before you go ahead and write the manuscript. And I was like, an outline? What does an outline mean? <laughs> what do you mean by writing an outline before writing the manuscript? He was like, go ahead and write me in bullet points. What are the main things you want to talk about in the paper before you go ahead and write the paper? So I did that. I wrote the main bullet points that I want to discuss in my manuscript and I came to show him what I have. He changed the order of a few things, he deleted some things and he added a few things and after we finalized the outline, he told me now you can go ahead and write the paper. And this is a lesson I learned for all the papers I wrote after. I never write a manuscript without the outline. The outline is like the map that guides you to achieve your goal. Without the map, you would feel lost and the same applies to the outline. That's why after you collect the information I recommend you write an outline about the main things that you're gonna talk about in your introduction in your case presentation in your discussion and then after you and your mentor agree on that you can go ahead and write your manuscript but wait before you write your manuscript I have another thing that you need to check before you go ahead with the writing process and that is the journal you have to decide on which journal you're publishing your paper in before you go ahead and write it and that is especially important for case reports because first not all journals accept case reports and second the criteria and the structure of a case report vary significantly between journals some journals give you only 500 words to write the whole case report while others give you 1800 words or 2000 words so you'll see the number of words and the structure of the article will vary significantly between journals that's why it's better to decide on the journal and then look at the journal instructions for the case report and then you write the case report according to these guidelines because you don't want to spend a few days writing a 2000 word discussion when the journal limits the discussion to 200 words but how can you find a journal to publish case reports you need to look at two things case report journals and specialty journals case report journals are generally journals that only publish case reports these are generally open access which means you have to pay to publish your article and the way to find these case report journals is just type on Google case report journals or if your case is cardiology type cardiology case report journals and you can scroll through multiple pages uh, you can find blogs you can find the actual journals and one place will lead you to the other until you find a big list of case report journals the second type of journals is specialty journals so if your article is in GI you start looking at all GI journals and you search for these journals the same way you did for the case report journals type in Google guest 
Astro in Terology journals and you'll find blogs, you'll find the actual journals themselves. But the trick here is a lot of the specialty journals are subscription based and do not accept case reports. So you need to look into each journal uh, author instructions to see if they accept case reports or not. And sometimes even when they accept case reports, it's very, very difficult to get a case report in it. The case has to be extremely unique and very rare for the journal to publish it. So how can you know whether this journal would be a good fit for you? You have to look at the research you did in the beginning to understand the value of your case. Is this really the first case? Is this really impactful and unique and helpful for people to read about? And what type of case reports has this journal published previously? Did they only publish extremely rare and unique cases or they published some case reports that have been published before? And once you identify that journal that will possibly accept your case report, you go ahead and read the instructions for writing a case report for that specific journal and you adjust your manuscript accordingly. Then we go to the next step, which is writing the actual manuscript. Case reports are generally divided into three sections, the introduction, the case presentation, and the discussion. Although the case presentation comes second, I recommend you start with the case presentation. Why? Because you already did all the research and collected all the information about the case. Now you just have to put it in writing. So that's why I find it easier to start with the case presentation then I go to the introduction and discussion. And save a lot of the research that you did at the beginning of the case to identify the value of your case for your introduction and discussion because many of these references that you used when you first started looking for the, the similar articles can also be used for your introduction and discussion. You have to keep in mind that your introduction will focus on the broad topic of the case report and then you're gonna dive deeper to reach your case and why your case is unique and why it should be published while your discussion will uh, compare and contrast your diagnosis or your treatment to prior literature, possibly explain the results and the importance of this case and how it can impact patient management in the future. If you'd like to learn the details of how to write an introduction, a discussion section, methods, results for an actual research article, go ahead and check out our research course. It's risk-free, 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you're not happy, we'll give you your money back. A final tip when talking about case reports, don't be disappointed if your first journal rejects your paper. That will happen to every researcher. Rejection is normal in the medical literature, so don't give up, submit it to another journal. You have to adjust it based on the other journal uh, requirement and instructions. So sometimes I've heard people who published their case report after the seventh rejection. So don't give up if you don't get your paper accepted from the first journal. And now if you'd like to download the checklist I have for you to publish your first case report and see an example of an outline, go ahead and click on the link in the cards above or the link in the description below. If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you can hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on research and USMLE journey. And now I will leave you with a detailed tutorial on how to find research positions in the US that you can watch by clicking on the link here. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your case report.